Welcome to Alternative Power and Machine, home of the user-friendly hydro system. Today we'll be looking at an ES&D Turgo Runner for repair. Let's take a look inside and get started. Okay, well here we have the ES&D Turgo that we will be diagnosing to see if we can repair it or not. Here right next to it we have one that came in a long time ago and it has major catastrophic failure. As you can see by the level of damage, it basically destroyed itself. This is the magnet plate. As you can see there are no magnets left. That's what happened. It completely destroyed itself. The magnets came loose, the adjustment bolt came loose, and basically turned itself into a milling machine. So hopefully with this one, which I'm about to take apart, we won't find that kind of damage. Probably gonna find that the magnets have shed a lot of their uh, steel casing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, here you see it taken apart. Uh, the Pelton wheel, or I'm sorry, the Turgo runner, just unscrews off the bottom. It, it's a right hand thread, so you just screw it off left hand while holding the magnet up on top. Uh, that's the second most uh, expensive component in this alternator, and as you can see, um, it's in pretty good shape. The, typically, it's going to wear right in this area the most. So that's where you'd want to look and start to erode out. Uh, it would just lose efficiency uh, over time. You know, they get worse and worse and worse, of course, and no longer serviceable. But this one here is in excellent shape. So that's one good uh, thing in its favor. Um, the alternator, on the other hand, has been adjusted down too far, and I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's actually a wear groove worn into this one, and the metal uh, from the pole pieces has been cut down, and on the uh, magnets themselves, all that's left of the uh, protective steel can, uh, stainless steel can, is right here. Now, over time, these magnets will degrade and crumble and fall off, um, but it's still usable. Um, these this particular alternator is extremely expensive so as long as it's still serviceable we probably keep it that way um, we can always replace it with one of our permanent magnets later or they can buy another uh, alternator directly from ES&D uh, but last time I checked they were in the eight nine hundred dollar range uh, so while this is still serviceable we're going to try and use it um, these, this one we had to pull off because the adjuster is actually stripped out. So we'll need to replace this part. We'll probably contact Paul Cunningham and see if it's still available. Uh, if not, this is, is an early design so we may not make it anymore. Um, the later ones were actually a, a cast, uh, were a stainless steel top uh, with the threads cast into that one part. So. Um, if I can buy one, I'd rather do that rather than have to make it, but it's a fairly simple part, so it wouldn't be that big a deal. Um, we had to pull this one off with a three-jaw puller. Uh, you got to be careful when you're doing that. Some of the, the later magnets are sort of square, so you have to be careful not to pull on the magnets. Uh, you will crack and break them or uh, mess up the epoxy that's holding them in. And you don't want to have to re-epoxy those magnets if you don't have to. Um, our next step is going to be to actually pull the shaft and the bearings out, which is fairly easy. Uh, just three set screws here and you, the bearings are driven out from the other end, or from this end anyway, toward this end. Um, three 203 bearings, they're pretty common. Um, one of the other issues with the alternators, or the most common thing that actually goes bad with the ES&D is these uh, jets. They tend to, this one's sawn off, this one's still okay, that one's broke, which is kind of normal. Uh, that's probably the first place to look at on an ES&D, see if the nozzle is cracked or broken out. We make a brass replacement to using our jets uh, for that, um, but these are generally relatively inexpensive. Um, you can get them from him for about 40 bucks or so. Ours are a bit more expensive being made out of brass, but uh, 
They are available either way. Um, we also have not uh, some issues in the uh, electrical box, which we haven't gone into yet, but all, a lot of this is loose and corroded. Uh, so we've got a fair amount of work to do with this. Um, our next step is to probably uh, disassemble the rest of this, and get the bearings out, make sure we don't have a messed up shaft. Uh, sometimes a bearing can spin on the shaft and, or other damage, but uh, this one feels pretty good. Um, I think that's it for now. Well, upon pulling the shaft and bearing assembly out, we found a major problem. As you can see, a little bit inside the bearing pocket where I'm moving it right now, I can move it from side to side way too far. Unfortunately, this unit is junk. This is a candidate for either replacing the entire alternator assembly or upgrading to one of our permanent magnet. As it is, the customer will not be pleased, but at this stage, it's his call. So, I'm going to make that phone call, make somebody's day.